well, replicants are really doing the business this afternoon. And that one, the lure barely hit the top and this pike absolutely nailed it. Using the, uh, the perch pattern, clear, relatively clear water. So ideal to use a natural pattern in those circumstances. And that one's saved, save us the job of unhooking it. But as you can see, we've got relatively clear water conditions. Nice natural pattern does the business again. As we've been working our way along the canal, we've come across an area of slightly more coloured water. With this in mind, I'm going to take off the replicant. It's been doing the business for us in the clearer, in the clearer water. And I'm going to switch to a hard bait. This is a fat boy. It's a shallow diving crankbait. And in this case, I've chosen it in a pattern called yellow zebra. Really bright yellow colour, flash of orange under the head there, which should really stand out. And also, it's got these rattles inside as well, which will obviously draw any predators up to investigate the noise. Let's get it out there and see if we can do any good with this one. Well, that little change to the uh, lure patterns paid off straight away. We got a fish on uh, our little crankbait. And the water's much more coloured here. And that bright yellow colour, it stands out really well in this coloured water. And this little uh, fella's fallen for it. I think the lesson there is that if you've gone through a few swims, you've not done any good, it really pays to try a different pattern and to keep your eye on the changing conditions through the day. It's minute changes in the conditions through the fishing day that dictate the feeding patterns of predators. So you really need to look for changing light levels and water conditions through the day and ring the changes to make the best of your day's fishing. Now, predators such as this pike, they're top of the food chain. It's absolutely vital that we treat them with the respect that they deserve. We've got our unhooking mat here. When we land these fish, it's important just to pop them down on a soft, soft surface like so, so they don't become damaged. And then we've got a pair of good quality pliers so that we can just pop these two treble hooks out. Like so, no harm done to the fish. Lovely little pike. And definitely a product of ringing the changes as we've gone along the uh, canal. Dietmar, I see you've put a hard bait on now. Do you yeah. want to tell me a little bit about the Fox Rage hard baits and the key differences between them? Of course I do. Um, we carry, in fact, two ranges in, in the Fox Rage range. One is the, the Pro Series and the other one is the Classic ones. And in the Classic ones, we carry some new models. Like this one, this little tiny thing here is called the Fat Boy. Works perfect for, for big pike, chub, perch, whatever you like. It's a shallow runner. And there's also his brother coming, which is a long version, which is the Slim Boy. Um, both are shallow runners, um, ideal for canals like this and, and some, some tiny ponds, you know, mm. with some weed in. And I show you some secrets, what we have done. We have done something very special. Um, we, you know, we make the lure and we design them at Fox. So we're not buying them from, from the ready-made from the shop. So it's our, our design. That's the re reason why I can show you one of our clear case uh, bodies. You know, we put the right veins on it. We put the right weights and also the rattles in to make them swim correctly. And here you see something very interesting. Once you're in the fishing tackle shop, you know, you see so many lures and you want to determine what is the right lure for my water. And in that case, we put the diving depths on it. So this one, like the fat boy, runs to two feet of water, the slim, his brother, wants to three feet of water. And that's perfect, you know, you absolutely determine and you get the right view for your right swim. Excellent, so we've got lures that have been very carefully developed, individually yeah. tank tested as definitely, well, I understand. Definitely. Otherwise you wouldn't uh, tell the people what kind of depth they will achieve. Of course, and then with lots of details on there so that you can choose exactly the right model for the waters that you're fishing.
We've had a look at the hard baits within the Fox Rage range. Dietmar, can you show us how to fish them? Yes, it um, doesn't matter if you go for a fat body or for a, for a slim one. Um, the way you fish it, especially when you fish from, from the shore, from the bank, is with your rod tip. Um, there are a lot of people, they use uh, hard baits the same way as they use spinners. You know, they cast out and they just retrieve. Um, I like to work with the rod tip. Sometimes I twitch it and that gives an extra action and sometimes it's exactly this what the pike likes. Um, first of all, cast it out. And then I retrieve a little bit. And then I work with the rod tip, you know, allowing them because all of these lures, the fat willy, the slim, the, the slim boy, the, the fat boy, all these lures are floatings. So as long as you stop, it comes up a little bit. And this is sometimes like a wounded fish and a predator likes it really. So you retrieve, you stop every now and then, you retrieve a little bit and this is the way how you fish it. So you get a lovely undulating action as it comes back through the water yeah. and that triggers those predatory fish. 100%. Brilliant, thanks very much, a really good Welcome. tip. When you're fishing for predators, it's really important to think like one. When you're looking at your swim, you need to read the situation and look for any obvious features where a predator would launch its ambush upon the prey fish. Now, when it comes to features, they don't get much better than the ones behind us. We've got a nice big bridge that provides plenty of shade and cover for predators to launch an attack as fish come through there. Also, on venues like a canal, the water tends to be narrower there, which means it's easy for the predators to corner fish and catch them in that way. Looking at other features around this particular venue, we've got upright structure in the water. We've got reed stems, we've got lily stems, and in some places we've got things like platforms, all of which provide perfect cover for pike and perch to hide away. And all of them will also have natural, uh, natural food that will draw silver fish in there and the pike and perch will be waiting for them. As well as that, we've got lots of weed beds. And today has been a classic example of where the pike have been hiding away in the weed beds. You twitch your lure past the weed bed and a pike rockets out and nails the lure. Overhanging trees are also really, really important features. Today, we've had bright sunshine during the middle part of the day. And obviously in those conditions, fish tend to hide themselves away. And by flicking your lure tight to the cover, we've seen a few good examples today where the pike have come out and grabbed the lure. Whether you're fishing a still water, a canal, a river, Keep your mind open, look for anywhere where a predator would hide itself away and get your lure in there for the best results. Fox Rage jig heads, doesn't matter if big or small, stand up or round, they all come with this little tiny bait holder here. No super glue anymore necessary, it fits perfectly to all your soft baits. Um, there are plenty of soft baits available and the most important thing is how you get these creatures workable and what the, yeah, the effect behind. Uh, especially when you have a little canal like this, at least three foot of water, not more, plenty of, uh, of weed in and you still fish with a jig hat, but you fish with a very light one, maximum 10 grams and I show you how to do that. Come with me. The easiest way is in fact you, you look for a, for a nice swim where you have a direct access. It's easier for you to land the fish instead of having let's say 10 foot of, uh, of weed in front of you. So you look for these little tiny humps over there, you stand there and then you try to cast, you cast to the other side and you immediately close the bail arm. Um, if you let it drop down to the bottom, you are lost. Lost, I mean, you're not, you're not lose the, the bait fish, I mean the, um, the rubber fish here, but what you lose is the, the attraction because it will be covered immediately in weed. So therefore, you cast out and you know it's only three or four foot of water and the pike easily will chase a lure on the surface. So you cast out, you stop immediately and then you retrieve. I hold the rod up like that and I use, let's say, a seven or an eight foot rod and just hold the rod up and more or less I fish a kind of, you call it sink and um, draw method. So the, the shed does only this, easy for the, for the pike, imitates a wounded fish and this is the way how it works, come on. So you cast out, stop immediately and start winding, just like that, winding in and don't forget even the few, a few feet in front of you can be very, very interesting. Even if you don't see any pike there, there can be fish. So again, and always 
try to fish the swim with three or four times at least. Sometimes it's the first cast which is in the fish, but very often you make the fish aggressive with your first cast and then the second or the third cast brings the result. Okay, always clean the lure, get rid of all this dirt, especially now when it gets autumn, you have a lot of leaves in the water. Okay, just work it this way. And even if I retrieve the fishing reel very quickly, I'm not spinning it in too quickly because I work with the rod and here is I just grind in the fishing line. Again there, the rod is the main thing. And because we were using braid with low stretch, I feel quite easily if there is a strike or if I have some weed or leaves on the hook. Just like that. And the nicest thing is if you have such clear water like here and you see let's say the last few feet the shed moving towards you and then all of a sudden it's not there because a pike is already over it. That's, that's the biggest and nicest thing you can imagine as a lure angler. Okay let's try to catch one. Oh, well done, Dietmar. I see you've got one. <laughs> yeah. Get the land in it for you. Oh, a little tail walker as well. You're going to hand land that one, are you? I will do hand land. Oh, okay. Fish. Oh, come on. Nice, uh, nice little jack. Lovely colours. Yeah, definitely. And he loves this um, uh, new pro shed. Oh, can I get your pliers, please, mate? Yeah, of course. Of course you can. Crochet Natural Classic. Okay. That's a really nice pattern, actually, isn't it? <laughs> it looks like a, what is it, a roach, roach pattern, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's a really sort of natural pattern. Yeah, you will be back. I will get to you. Okay, out oh. it goes. So we just, that's a good thing with a single. You can oh, just okay, okay. flick it out like that. So a lot easier on hooking them when you've got lots of trebles definitely, involved, isn't definitely. it? So. Excellent. Okay, okay. My, first, my first pike in this swim here. Excellent. Okay, bye bye. Little boy or girl or whatever. Go. Okay. Before you cast back out, why don't you, uh, yeah. or, or throw yourself in, why don't, you tell us a little, <laughs> yes, why don't you tell us a little bit about why you've chosen that particular lure for these conditions? Look, um, we, uh, we fished a couple of meters already and uh, I was trying in that part of the, uh, of the water over there a brighter color. Okay. Um, it was also a little bit uh, darker the water, now it tends to be a little bit more clearer. And uh, instead of uh, giving it a shocky color, I want to have more natural ones. And it was the first cast just next to the boat and it was bang and uh, straight into the fish. You know, and that makes also sense that you have um, different colors, you know, available when you go out fishing. And that makes it so nice when you have this, this lure fishing, you know, this walk along the bank. You have just a couple of stuff with you, you know. Even you can, you can come from the bank, you know, with, with a suit on, you just take your fishing stuff out of the car, one rod, little things here and there, and you make a couple of casts and you have a lot of fun, you know. Excellent, excellent. Okay, I think we should uh, get that one back in the water and see if we can catch another one. Yeah, definitely. I see you've laid out some soft lures yes. here. I don't recognize any of these. Which ones are they? These are the new ones and they are called the Pro Shed Natural Classics. Um, you know, last year we introduced the Pro Shed Fire Tilt, yep. coming in three sizes, five and a half inch, seven and nine inch. And the speciality on these ones were, of course, they're very, very strong 
rubber material and the fire tails which attracts a lot of predators. And now we introduce six new colors which are natural patterns, uh, specially made for anglers that like this natural type of lures. Um, first of all, the glitter bug, which is a double dipped version. This is a very natural pattern. Um, I like to fish it in clear water. Um, also in the big size of uh, nine inch, the perfect choice for sea anglers, for halibut fishing or big cod. Um, then we have the Midnight China, a bluish type of, um, of pattern. Uh, looks like a roach or a herring. Baltic anglers for, for pike loves it. Then the, the perch. I know a lot of anglers really are absolutely happy to get this perch pattern back. Colored water, clear water, it's an all-rounder. I love it, really. Um, then brown trout. Brown trout, this is a nice pattern, very clear water for big trouts and also big pike in big reservoirs where you have uh, big brown trouts. Also in some areas where you get these super trouts, um, hucho, hucho, you know that, um, they also like to eat small trouts as well. And we have hot olive and the rainbow trout. Rainbow trout is the number one choice in all the reservoirs, you know it. And the hot olive or the zander angler likes it because this is a specific color um, Zender and Perch loves to eat. Brilliant, okay, some really natural patterns there that I'm sure over the coming year or so are gonna be tricking lots of predators. Well, only a small pike came flying out of the cover right at my feet there and grabbed the lure. It is a particularly small specimen, so to save risk in tangling him up in the landing net, just going to lift him out behind the head. He obviously uh, isn't too happy about being caught. Not the biggest pike I'm ever going to catch, but as we come towards the end of the day, they're all welcome. Lovely little fish, perfection in miniature there. Probably uh, only a year or so old. We'll slip it back, have a few more casts before the light fails, and see if we can get another fish. Dietmar, we've mostly been using swim-tailed soft baits today. Correct. I know that there's some other types available. Yep. Can you just talk us through what they are? Yes, make it easy. Um, we have the most action ones, which are the swim or the paddle tails. As you can see here, these have uh, a lot of water resistance by using quite big tails at the end. They will not only have the tail movement, they also will um, flank around and make some nice vibration on the water. Uh, the next are the ones which with a twisted tail. Um, they have less body action, just the tail moves along, a lot around and makes it, especially for, for zander and perch, very interesting. I don't know, also Jack Pikes loves it. One of my and favorites. In yeah, fact. I know, I know, definitely. Well, here, here now in, an, in a different color, and uh, this is really interesting. You can, you can jig it, you can just retrieve it, very nice stuff. And then the, uh, the no action sheds, which are um, all the sheds with no paddle tail at the ends, no banana shaped twisters or whatever. They come with a V shape or with just a normal pin, so just a normal pin at the end. And they have very, very low action. Um, you, you just twitch a little bit with your rod tip and then you get a little bit movement in it. That's all. And this is specially made for winter fishing. Excellent. Dietmar, thanks very much for that insight into the available soft baits no on the market. Thank you. One interesting thing that you get with lure fishing is the fact that even the smallest pike will go for quite a large lure. Now, traditionally in the UK, people tend to use small lures like spinners, spoons, of only a couple of inches long. But I think this just goes to show that these slightly larger lures of between say four and six inches will catch any pike, obviously from the largest all the way down to little fellas like this. You can't smell it, but here is fish oil inside and this fish oil makes our fish necks irresistible. It's not only the color and the movement, but also the liquid and the flavor, which is absolutely smashing. Predator fish likes it. We've seen how to rig up a variety of soft baits today using soft body lures and a jig head. And the jig heads that I tend to use for my fishing are a little bit different from the ones that we've seen earlier on today. 
These are our spin jigs. They're available in a variety of sizes, different weights, different size hooks to suit the soft plastic bait that you're using. Now, where they're different is underneath, they have a small swivel and then a silver blade. What this does is you retrieve the lure through the water, it flutters, you get a lot of flash off of it, a lot of vibration. I've been using these for the last year or so and they've given me lots and lots of extra fish and on lots of occasions actually outfished normal jig heads. So a good little tip, well worth a go. Coming towards the last hour of light now, and this is an absolutely perfect time to be out lure fishing. As the light level's full, the predators have got a real advantage over the prey fish, and it's this time of day that can be the perfect opportunity to trick a big predator that might otherwise not go for your artificial lure. For those of you that work during the days as well, perfect opportunity to grab a quick hour on the way home. Well, I was just saying that as the light levels uh, start to fall, it's a really good time to tempt predatory fish. And we've got another fish on here. It's taken one of the soft baits. It's not a huge pike. It's slightly bigger than most of the fish that I've been catching during the day today. So obviously uh, that's a nice bonus. I can't even see the soft shad. And that's one of the advantages with these soft lures. They really inhale them. And very often you get really good hook holds as a, as a result of that. Whereas with a hard bait, they might just grab hold of it and let it go. So I'm just going to chin this fish out when it's finished tail walking. Now I'd say to most inexperienced anglers, it is obviously easier to use a landing net um, when you're new to these methods, but obviously some more experienced anglers may want to just land them like that. Now I'm just going to show you how to unhook a pike for those of you that haven't done it before. Now a lot of people are scared of pike, obviously there's a lot of teeth there, and they're scared that they're going to get damaged. The most important thing that you need to remember is the pike is the only coarse fish that you're going to handle that's actually got a built-in handle that makes it nice and easy to hold. You can just slide your hand to the front of the gill cover there and to make sure the fish doesn't flap around you can just pop it between your legs like so. And this one's made a really good, uh, really good job of that. So instead of unhooking it through the mouth I'm just going to pop the soft bait through there and I can unclip it and just pull the trace free to minimise any damage to the fish. So like I say, for those of you that haven't done it before, you can just grip the pike firmly, like so, and that'll make sure that you don't damage your hand and that you don't damage the pike, which is obviously really important. Yeah. We've come to the end of our day on the Grand Western Canal. Dietmar and I have had great fun exploring this intimate waterway, trying a variety of hard bait and soft bait methods. And hopefully the tips that we've shown you will give you a great head start to try modern lure fishing. I hope to see you again on the bank soon.